Ray Jones, their outstanding guard, has to be the king. They don't blame me. Daryl Cruz, Devin Eva. A weapon tell you! Kirby Brooks on the two-pointer. Dallas Nichols wins the game! Alexander. It's a dunk right at his feet. Send it in, Jones! Staten takes the ball to the left side, spins, shoots, layup, shot, good! Oh, He's got that Carter trump ball! Javon Carter is in Trey Young's head. Butler, into the lane, in the traffic, it goes again! West Virginia has won its first Big East championship! They're going wild here at the Coliseum. So long, Big Blue! Hello, Golden Blue! The West Virginia Mountaineers are going to the Final Four! It is a great night to be a Mountaineer, wherever you may be! And now, it's the show brought to you by Mountaineer fans, for Mountaineer fans, the Country Rose Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into episode one of the 2023-2024 edition of the CRW Hoops podcast. Here as we're set to tip off the West Virginia men's basketball season Monday night with a game against Missouri State. And we'll get into talking about that game here towards the tail end of this episode. And I'll provide my prediction as to if I think West Virginia will come out victorious in the season opener to tip off this men's basketball season. But before we get to that, there's certainly a lot of news and notes to update here so let's get into that right away with a little bit of mountaineer news all right before we get into this year's version of the men's basketball team and this season specifically we do have a little bit of recruiting news to update in regards to the future of wvu basketball here in mountaineer news as it came out this week west virginia has received a commitment from a combo guard in carmelo atkins as you see here shared by ethan bach over on wvsportsnow.com of course they do a great job covering all the mountaineer sports content there we're appreciative of being a part of the sports now family of networks you can find our show on the web there at wvsportsnow.com as well and we appreciate you tuning in there if you do choose to watch it that way or if you tune into the video version here on the country roads webcast channel ask that you hit the thumbs up button give us a like it really helps the video's performance and if you're a west virginia fan be sure and subscribe if you haven't already helps us helps you helps get more of this mountaineer sports content out to mountaineer nation and we appreciate you tuning in on the audio side as well you can find this podcast that way also on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, you name the platform, you can find us there. Just search Country Roads Webcast. If you're listening that way, leave us a rating review. That helps, and be sure to share us around with other Mountaineer fans you may know. But in regards to Carmelo Atkins, as you see here, there is his commitment graphic he shared on X. And if you want to follow him, Mountaineer Nation, you can, at cmelo 131 He says, home. Morgantown, let's rock, hashtag committed, hashtag West Virginia, and you love to see it, and this is a good pickup for West Virginia. We know that they need some guards. Uh, they're lacking guard depth this season, so obviously going to need that in the future as well, so glad to see them secure a good addition in Carmelo Atkins, who's a combo guard at six foot five. so great size there, and as you see here detailed in the article, reclassified, was actually a 2023 recruit, reclassified, did a prep year this season at Phoenix Prep OTE, and has became a 2024 recruit that West Virginia offered back in September. It was Jordan McCade that sent out that offer. And of course, as you see now, it only took a couple of months later for Carmelo Atkins to make up his mind and choose to play for West Virginia in the future as the basketball program secures a commit there. And that's our lead off here on Mountaineer News. Now let's get into some more storylines that are in relation to the start of this men's basketball season. And I think, of course, probably the most prevalent of those storylines in recent days Definitely didn't see this one coming. A real gut punch for West Virginia fans who have had to deal with a 
ton throughout this offseason, been a very tumultuous offseason for West Virginia men's basketball. Obviously, the coaching change that occurred way back when, the transfers that followed that, then West Virginia having to rebuild the roster multiple times, really. Then you get waivers denied for Omar Silverio, waiver denied for Raekwon Battle. You get Jose Perez dismissed from the team. He winds up at Arizona State. And then now, just to you know, kind of top it all off here in recent days, we learned that West Virginia point guard Kerr Creesa will be suspended for the first nine games of the WVU men's basketball season, unfortunately. As you see here, also reported by Ethan Bach over on WVSportsNow.com. And this one's hard to put a positive spin on, guys. You guys know I like to try and remain optimistic here, but uh, just a tough blow. West Virginia was dealt, uh, received impermissible benefits while he was at Arizona. Um, He's still allowed to practice and travel with the team during this suspension but as you can see here this is the statement from West Virginia in late August 2023 West Virginia University learned of a potential eligibility concern for men's basketball transfer student athlete Kerr Creesa who admitted to receiving impermissible benefits while enrolled at the University of Arizona. West Virginia worked cooperatively with the NCAA student athlete reinstatement staff to reach an appropriate resolution as a result of his actions Creesa will miss nine 2023 2024 regular season games as part of his eligibility reinstatement. Creasa will be able to continue to practice and travel with the team during his suspension from competition. He accepts responsibility for his actions at Arizona and looks forward to joining his Mountaineer teammates on the floor. And this one is really just salt in the wound for West Virginia, as I said, for everything that happened throughout the offseason already, but also just because of the fact that West Virginia really doesn't have another true point guard on the roster. And adding Creasa gave West Virginia that true point guard, something they had been lacking. And now West Virginia We'll have to search for some other guys to handle the ball here to start the season. And, you know, let's take a look at these first nine games that West Virginia will be missing. Kerr Crease of four. Then we'll talk about another storyline that has emerged heading into this opener before we take a look at West Virginia's projected lineup and talk a little bit about the Missouri State game. And as we look here at the West Virginia men's basketball schedule to open the season, we obviously know Missouri State coming up to tip things off. And then that following Friday, West Virginia will play Monmouth, then Jacksonville State, SMU, Bellarmine, St. John's, Pitt, Drexel, and UMass. So as you see them there on the screen, those are the nine games that Kerr Creesa will miss for West Virginia, and they will have to try and figure something out there at the point guard spot. Kobe Johnson will obviously be expected to step into that starting role, but it's finding reserve minutes is where West Virginia is going to have to likely rely on a redshirt freshman and potentially you're going to be very shorthanded in terms of scholarship players for these games as well, um, especially at least to start the season as we have some other news to report on in terms of a player that unfortunately will not be available for the Mountaineers, at least for this season opener and potentially uh, for quite some time moving forward as well. And of course, that is big man, a cook, a cook, the Georgetown transfer that really was going to help West Virginia a lot with rim protection. He was also a very athletic player, can even shoot the basketball, and was going to be a big part of this team for West Virginia, not only as a starter, but one of the very few big men that West Virginia had that they could rely on consistently alongside Jesse Edwards. Now West Virginia is lacking depth, not only in the backcourt at the guard position there, losing Kirk Creesa for the first nine games there, but now we will be without a cook cook for at least the season opener, and who knows how long that he will be out as they continue to run tests. And of course, this is all secondary. Continue want to you know hammer home that primarily the concern is for him to get healthy in his personal life and continue to send out thoughts, prayers, well wishes, however you want to term it, to a cook, a cook, and his family as he deals with that scary situation that he suffered there in the exhibition game against George Mason and hope that he gets healthy first and foremost. But in terms of West Virginia's basketball depth, now not only has their backcourt taken a hit, but their front court has as well, as West Virginia you know, will be lacking big men for this upcoming game, this season opener against Missouri State. And we'll see how West Virginia handles it as they will be short on scholarship players for this contest. And let's take a look at the West Virginia basketball roster and break down just who they'll have in the fold and in the rotation for this upcoming game against Missouri State to tip off the 2023-2024 men's basketball season. All right, Mountaineer Nation, here's a look at the 2023-2024 West Virginia men's basketball as it looks heading into the season. As you can see there, highlighted in red on the roster, you get Raekwon Battle and Noah Farrakhan. Both of those two are highlighted in red because they are currently sitting 
sitting out this year. Noah Farrakhan, obviously, it was known that he would have to sit out this season with his transfer. Raekwon Battle, we thought we could get a waiver approved. It was denied by the NCAA for now. West Virginia is going through the appeal process. We'll see how long that takes and what type of results they get from that. But for now, Raekwon Battle will not be available. So that's why those two names are highlighted in red there. And then, of course, we just went over the statuses of both Kirk Risa and Akuka Cook. That's why they are highlighted in green. And then I have down at the bottom, as you see there, the center, Ali Ragab. I've got him highlighted there because he's a walk-on player. So if you're looking and you're counting up the remaining names for West Virginia there, you'll see eight scholarship players. That's what West Virginia will head into the season opener with. Only eight players, five starters, three reserve guys. So West Virginia will have to you know, thrust some guys into the action, maybe more than they kind of expected to when you're looking at a guy like a Jeremiah Bembry, who you're going to look to you know, get some reserve minutes at the point guard position now behind Kobe Johnson because someone's going to have to take that load off, especially, you know, lo and behold, knock on wood, if Kobe Johnson was to unfortunately get in foul trouble in this contest or something, you would need someone there. And looks like Jeremiah Bembry, the Florida State transfer, who we haven't even really seen yet. I believe he played in the secret scrimmage, but the one exhibition that we got to see as Mountaineer fans against George Mason, we did not see Jeremiah Bembry play. So we'll see how that goes there at the guard position. And then you look at Offrey Neve, who's another true freshman who I think was probably going to play a little bit in the non-con for West Virginia anyways, especially with how the roster stands currently following, you know, the Raekwon battle waiver being denied. But now without Kerr Creasa and with the lack of depth in the front court as well, you certainly are going to have to count on Offrey to give you some minutes. And the positive side of that is he looked really good, and I think he's further ahead than what I expected him to be at this point in the season. And he's a guy with a high ceiling and a lot of potential, a lot of athleticism, really high basketball IQ and can do some different things, including handle the ball a little bit so he can mix in in your front court and your back court so he's certainly a reserve guy that's going to help you uh, moving forward but as you look at the roster um, I mentioned the guys that are kind of sitting out for West Virginia we've detailed them a little bit a cook a cook the Georgetown transfer Kirk Reese at the Arizona transfer that's I think is going to be a big player for West Virginia at the point guard spot throwing lobs to you know the big man Jesse Edwards he's a great passer he led the Pac-12 and assists each of the past two seasons and then, of course, Raekwon Battle, if we can ever get that waiver situation figured out, he's got a great chance to be the leading scorer on this team and kind of the go-to guy when West Virginia needs a bucket. He's a great shooter. He can create his own shot. He's great off the bounce, great ball handling. I mean, you name it, he's really good on the offensive end and great on defense as well. And then Noah Farrakhan is an athletic player that's really going to help West Virginia in the future. If you saw the dunk contest during the Mountaineer Madness event in the preseason, he was really the standout there, you know, dunking over the seven-foot Ali Ragab, things like that. So, He's going to be a player next season for West Virginia, but he will be sitting out this year. Then, of course, you get Seth Wilson returning at the guard spot. He's going to, you know, give you minutes there at the two spot, and he's a great shooter for the Mountaineers, and he's really going to have to step up his game. He's going to have an increased role right now with Kirk Reese out and with the Raekwon battle waiver being denied, the person that, you know, could be a big beneficiary of those minutes that, you know, have to be dispersed out now is going to be Seth Wilson. He's going to move into the starting lineup. He's going to be, you know, counted on to score more for West Virginia. So he's going to have to, you know, take on that role and, you know, be heady with it, make smart plays and uh, really hopefully be an impactful player for the West Virginia Mountaineer men's basketball team this season because they're going to need him to step up and, you know, be a scorer this year. And then I mentioned Kobe Johnson really, you know, stepping into a lead role now as going to be the team's point guard to start the season for these first nine games instead of being the reserve player that it seemed like he was going to be to start the season for West Virginia kind of a defensive specialist, I guess you could say. Coach Eilert is termed that he's kind of the guy they would go to if they need to lock down an opposing player would be Kobe Johnson with his length and defensive capabilities. So he's very good on that end. Might have to step up his game a little bit on the offensive side when it comes to orchestrating and getting West Virginia into the sets and the things that they need to run offensively with Kirk Crease out early on in the season. So we'll see how he's able to handle that. And then, of course, I mentioned Jeremiah Bembry, the lengthy transfer coming over from Florida State, but he's very young. They were looking to kind of bring him along slowly, but they're going to have to you know, give him some minutes now with this Kirk Crease situation. But great length, 6'5", 185. If he can develop into you know a defensive game with that length, he could really be a standout on that end for West Virginia, and hopefully he's a player that you know takes this chance that he's going to have and runs with it and does something this season for West Virginia and maybe has an impact more so than they expected him to. We mentioned a cook, a cook, the Georgetown transfer, how impactful he can be. And then you've got Quinn Slazinski transferring in from Iona, began his career at Louisville, and he's a guy 
that, you know, was committed to St. John's decided to come to West Virginia instead. And I was very impressed by him in the, you know, exhibition game against George Mason, you know, maybe more so than anyone else, just because I knew how good Jesse Edwards was, but I didn't expect Quinn Slezinski to be, you know, the scoring threat that he was 21 points in the game, shot the basketball really well. And I thought made some really impressive plays as well. And he's going to be counted on now uh, more. So also he was kind of the sixth man in that exhibition game. Now he'll move into the starting lineup to begin the season for West Virginia. And he's a player they're going to count on. So hopefully he continues to perform the way that he did in that exhibition game. And then Pat Sumnick as well mentioned West Virginia lacking depth there in the front court. So Sumnick can really, you know, assume a big role there. I think I heard Coach Eilert say he would rather, you know, play, you know, the three position, kind of more of a small forward. But right now with the lack of depth that West Virginia has, in terms of big men, he's really going to be counted on to play that four spot. So hopefully he really embraces that role and can become, you know, a rebounding threat for West Virginia. That's something this team needs to improve on. So if you can carve out a niche, you know, doing that, if you're assuming Nick, that would be good for you. And uh, he has a potential to do that coming off the bench for West Virginia. And then another starter likely here in Josiah Harris, six, seven guy. And speaking of rebounding, he is the one guy that's kind of been the standout there. The coaching staff has said, and that kind of is going to be his role on this. This team, I think he's got a chance to be right along there with Jesse Edwards and leading the team and rebounding, you know, game by game status wise. And he's also a guy that has an underrated shot and could really spread the defense out as West Virginia will try and do that a lot this season. You saw in the exhibition kind of play a lot of four out one end, uh, give Jesse Edwards a lot of space to work inside and give your shooters areas to, you know, not only create when you had the drive and kick aspect with Kirk Creasa involved, of course, but you got some other guys that can do that as well. And you got a lot of good shooters that can really spread out the defense with link there at the four spot or the three spot. When you look at Slazinski and of course, Jojo Harris. And I talked a little bit about Offrey Neve coming in from Israel, the true freshman really impressed me in that exhibition. You know, I mentioned Slazinski being impressive. If there was another guy that was going to, you know, fight him for that title, it would be Offrey Neve. Really great basketball IQ. That's what impressed me the most is just how much he knew the game, knew where to be, just kind of innately uh, making those plays out there. Saw him throw a lob for a dunk. You saw him have a couple dunks of his own. He really, you know, showed some great ball handling, some great speed. If he can really, you know, learn the fundamentals and get involved the way that they need him to within this team, I think he's going to have a nice role this season and as a player with a very high ceiling and who knows how far his potential can take him. We'll see how that goes moving forward. Then you look at the two centers West Virginia has. I mentioned Ali Ragab coming in from Cairo, Egypt, seven foot, 275, by far the biggest player on this roster, but more of a developmental guy. You know, the one walk on that is on this roster, and he's a guy that they were probably not hoping to have to play any, especially, you know, once they got into conference play. But with the situation going on with the Cook, a Cook now, they're probably going to have to throw a few minutes Ali Ragab's way each game, and maybe they'll start that here with these early games, kind of try and get him some experience there so where that if they are going to have to count on him in some of these more crucial games, once conference play starts or you get into some of these tournament games, uh, that if he does have to play some minutes, they won't feel so bad about it because they've got him some experience here early in the season. So look for him to get a few minutes here against Missouri State in some of these early games, and we'll see how his development goes for West Virginia. But great size there. Certainly that's something that you can't teach that he brings to the table. And then we rounded out with probably the most important player on the West Virginia roster and especially now given the Raekwon battle, a cook, a cook and Kirk Creasa situations and that's Jesse Edwards, the transfer center coming in from Syracuse, going to be wearing number seven, his final year of college basketball, certainly going to be an NBA guy, great size, six foot 11 230 pounds, can stretch the floor as well, that's something I didn't realize he had was such a great jump shot, got a mid-range game, can even shoot from the outside if he needs to, but he's an excellent rim protector, got nearly three blocks a game at Syracuse near the top of the ACC and rebounds and blocks every year that he was there. Um, looked very good in the exhibition, running the floor. You wondered about him, you know, playing zone a lot at Syracuse if he'd be able to play man to man. Seems like he is transitioning to that well. And I look for West Virginia to even utilize some zone this season, not only because he's comfortable with that, but because of the lack of depth that we're talking about, they need to try and do everything they can to keep players out of foul trouble. Utilizing some zone defense might 
help to allow you to be able to do that. So, you know, look out for some of that. But Jesse Edwards, regardless of how West Virginia decides to use him, he's going to be a weapon for the Mountaineers. You saw that in the first game there in that exhibition, you know, really took over late in the game and wheeled West Virginia to that victory, blocking shots, scoring and ones, you know, had a 6-0 run of his own, if I'm not mistaken, 21 points, seven rebounds, three blocks, two assists, two steals. And, you know, if he has stat lines like that, that's going to really be positive results for West Virginia this season. And they're going to need performances like that from Jesse Edwards, especially here early in the season. So, you know, that's the guy to watch for is the superstar on this team is Jesse Edwards to round out our roster discussion here and wrap up Mountaineer news. Let's take a look at the projected starting lineup here on episode one of the 2023-2024 version of the CRW Hoops podcast. All right, Mountaineer Nation, leading off our preview of the season opener here. This is the projected starting five for West Virginia against Missouri State. You know, having discussed the storylines involving Kirk Reese and Akuka Cook, the players that will be missing for West Virginia in this game. Of course, the Raekwon battle waiver situation ongoing as well. This is what it looks like we will probably see in this game for West Virginia. Of course, Kobe Johnson moving into the starting lineup as the team's point guard. Seth Wilson at the other guard position. Then your two forwards will be JoJo Harris and Quinn Slazinski, who slides into the starting lineup after you know, serving as the team's sixth man there in the exhibition game against George Mason and then of course rounding out your starting five with your big man there in Jesse Edwards the Syracuse transfer that should make such a big impact on this basketball team this season and West Virginia definitely needs him to do just that in this game against Missouri State and then Speaking of Missouri State a little bit you know don't know too much about the program in general they did play a exhibition game themselves this past week, but they played a Division three school in Westminster that they handled easily by 50-plus points. But as far as who's on the roster, I know they returned Donovan Clay, who was a big scorer for them last season, kind of playing the three-man. Uh, they brought in a transfer from Xavier and Cesar Edwards, who uh, scored a lot of points for them in that exhibition game, so he may be someone to look out for on that Missouri State roster, as well as a pretty good big man that they return in Austin Mason, who will probably Probably play a lot of minutes for them as well. So that's kind of the guys that you'll look at as far as playing a lot of minutes will probably be Donovan Clay and Austin Mason. And then they do have a pretty good point guard there that they returned from last season named Matthew Lee. Uh, they're looking to up their tempo of play this season, much like West Virginia. So it could be a game where we see both teams trying to get up and down the court. But that's kind of who to look out for as far as, you know, starters and key players for both of these teams. Let's take a look at how ESPN sees this matchup and their game preview here as we wrap up up here and I'll provide my prediction for this game against Missouri State to tip off the 2023-2024 men's basketball season. And as we see here, ESPN's matchup predictor certainly favoring the Mountaineers here as it gives the Mountaineers an 80% chance to win versus only a 20% chance for Missouri State. I believe I did see a spread on this game at the time I'm recording this. It's seven and a half in favor of the Mountaineers. So West Virginia certainly looks like they're favored by all accounts heading into this game, despite you know the deficiencies that they're dealing with, only eight scholarship players and lack of depth at the guard position and potentially in the front court as well. Uh, the game, of course, will be played on ESPN Plus if you want to watch this one uh, Monday night, November six, seven o'clock tip there in Morgantown. You know the Mountaineers are favored, and I think despite everything that they've got going, I think that they have enough talent left with the players that they will be playing in this game that they should be able to win this one. And, you know, I said it's a seven and a half point spread. As far as my prediction, I think West Virginia will cover that spread. I'm expecting still yet a double digit win for the Mountaineers. I think the game, you know, could be close for a long period of stretches, even down to, you know, late, kind of similar to how that George Mason scrimmage was for West Virginia. But you saw them in that game really start to rely on Jesse Edwards and do some things that allow them to pull away. And I think at the end of this game, West Virginia will be able to do just that. I've got West Virginia winning this one by 11 points over Missouri State, 85 to 74, as far as my prediction for the season opener here for the West Virginia men's basketball team.
All right, so there you have it, Mountaineer Nation. There's my prediction for the season opener for West Virginia. Would love to hear yours, though. Drop it down in the comments if you're tuned into the video version there. We appreciate all those interactions as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. Really appreciate you guys tuning into episode one of the CRW Hoops podcast. We'll have plenty of these coming throughout the West Virginia men's basketball season. And if you want to chat with us again, you can come do just that over on the Country Roads webcast channel. Immediately following the conclusion of this basketball game Monday night, we'll be hosting a live post game show on our channel. So come over to us there at the Country Roads webcast. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. You'll be able to find that Monday night and come in there and chat with us live and share your thoughts on this team's performance. Hopefully it'll be coming after a West Virginia win. But if you don't get a chance to tune into that live, don't worry. We'll be back sharing our thoughts on episode two of the CRW Hoops podcast in the early days of next week. And looking forward to continuing to cover this West Virginia men's basketball team this season and if you want to find out just when our content will be releasing you can do that by following us on social media we're on x at wvu country roads and then facebook and instagram we're just country roads webcast we appreciate you guys and hoping for a positive start to the 2023-2024 men's basketball season new coach a lot of new faces a lot of new obstacles to overcome but i think this team is ready and willing to overcome those obstacles and turn those negatives into positives and they're looking to have a successful season, and we're hoping to cheer them on as they try and achieve that goal here on the Country Roads webcast, as we know all of you all are throughout Mountaineer Nation as well. So having said that, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineer. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those